Harry's claims about the son's alleged bugging and tracking devices have been rejected by a high court judge. Mr. Justice Van Court made the observation, clearly unimpressed, that Harry did not provide any specifics to support his long-standing claims against the publication. It appears that the Duke of Sussex and approximately 40 other claimants have launched a legal battle against the Sun's publisher, claiming that his personal information was hacked or illegally obtained in order to produce juicy tabloid stories. One might think that this would necessitate a well-thought-out plan or, at the very least, some evidence that is trustworthy. However, as things stand, Harry's legal story is more fiction than fact, and his most recent details of claim only offer hazy allegations that even a half-baked detective would dismiss. The judge denied Harry permission to include certain claims in a preliminary ruling, such as that Chelsea Davy, Harry's former girlfriend, had her car spied on. It would appear that Harry had already backed away from this claim, perhaps realizing that his legal story was more like a poorly planned soap opera than a serious legal proceeding. Justice Van Court didn't find it funny. He said, no particulars are provided about bugging and that a previous specific allegation about Chelsea Davies' car has been dropped. He also said that no specific details were given about the bugging. Even more amusing was the judge's rejection of Harry's request to include the phrases and or the use of listening and tracking devices in his case. The judge criticized the prince for not providing any substantial support for these dramatic claims. The judge simply shook his head in disbelief as Harry clutched his papers and exclaimed, But your honor, they were definitely listening to me. One can only imagine the scene. Harry's ambitions in the legal field have been harmed before. The prince's claims of phone hacking were dismissed by Justice Van Court last year because the court found that the prince had waited far too long to start his legal battle. The judge called Harry's claim that he had been prevented from coming forward sooner by an alleged secret agreement with Buckingham Palace implausible. It almost seems as though Harry believes that because he is a king, the rules don't apply to him. Justice Van Court has even compared Harry's case to a prolonged conflict between two belligerent but well-equipped armies. This description makes one chuckle without a doubt. While the sun is busy rolling its eyes and filing paperwork, it paints a picture of Harry wearing a cardboard crown and marching into court with a group of overzealous legal eagles ready to fight imaginary enemies. The judge has upheld some objections from the son and granted Harry's attorney's permission to modify the way his case is presented despite the legal chaos. He emphasized the fact that the January trial must continue or be settled outside of court, prompting Harry to conclude this exhausting saga. Harry's persistent insistence that he is somehow the victim in all of this is perhaps the most comical aspect of the entire ordeal. One possibility is that his incessant complaints about intruding on his privacy are an example of the pot calling the kettle black. After all, he hasn't kept his personal life private at all, spilling intimate details like a broken faucet. He has made revelations about the royal family before, during, and after Queen Elizabeth II's death, but here he is in court pointing fingers. Prince Harry is a man-child, and one cannot help but feel both sympathy and frustration for him. Wake up and smell the coffee. It's time. Just because you were born into royalty does not make you the most special or important person on the planet. The judge has made it abundantly clear, fed up with Harry's paranoid ramblings, stop wasting the time of the court.